Opening video shot of a Central Park pathway, text over video, Central Park, New York City. Text over video, Seneca Village, the Williams family legacy. Then video of a 19th century map of Manhattan that we then zoom in on to reveal the location of Seneca Village with a scroll overlay of the 1855 U.S. Census. Cynthia Copeland, historian, Institute for the Exploration of Seneca Village History, speaking. Seneca Village was a community of African American, Irish, and German immigrants that existed in the 19th century in an area that was known as the Pre Park area. It was roughly between 82nd and 89th Streets, between 7th and 8th Avenues in New York City. There were about 300 people that lived in the community, particularly towards the end and towards its demise. And we've been on this mission to find descendants to help tell this story text over a historical illustration of Manhattan in the 1850s. Seneca Village existed until 1857, when the city of New York used eminent domain to acquire the land for the creation of Central Park. The village was raised and the almost 225 residents were forced to leave. Caledonia Cal Jones, Manhattan Borough Historian Emeritus, speaking. Andrew Williams was one of a number of African Americans who were free, and in 1825, Andrew Williams purchased land in Seneca Village for $120, which was a lot of money then. Video shots of New York City 19th century maps detailing the location of the Williams family property. Cynthia Copeland speaking. Andrew Williams was one of the early settlers of Seneca Village. He was there in the very beginning and he was there at the very end. He was a boot black, he shined shoes for a living, later he was a cart man, and he was someone that we were really, really interested in and really wanted to try to make connections. An aerial video shot of Central Park in the fall, text over video, the search for the Williams family. Cal Jones speaking. I've been able to find four generations, and one of the descendants is Andrew Williams' great, 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 great granddaughter, fourth great granddaughter, Ariel Williams. Video of Ariel Williams, Cal Jones, and others exploring the area of Central Park where Seneca Village used to be. Ariel Williams speaking. Cal Jones reached out and I remember that first week of us connecting we had so many calls and try to help him connect all these missing puzzle pieces and connect my entire family back to Seneca Village. And she is like the family historian and she gave me some understanding of everyone in the family all the men were named Andrew Williams. The video of an illustration of the Williams family tree Ariel Williams speaking. So the name Andrew Williams continually gets carried over throughout the entire family and the only variation is the middle name changes. It's absolutely crazy that they all look alike and the name is still carried out to this day and my brother also being named Andrew Williams. A historic photo of a 19th century female Williams family member, Cal Jones speaking. And the women, the women had started with A rhyming and being as close to Andrew as possible, right down to Ariel. So it showed a lot of family pride. Aerial video shot of Central Park in the summer. Text over video. The Williams family after Seneca Village. Video of the Andrew Williams protest letter. Cal Jones speaking. Andrew Williams was not a formally educated man but he, he was, he's a sharp man. You could see it in the, in the moves that he made. He immediately protested about the takeover, first of all, but it seemed as though he felt his property was worth about $4,000. Video of the Andrew Williams protest letter, Ariel Williams speaking. As the records show, Andrew Williams was offered an amount for his space in Central Park to get him out and he responded to that request with a counter stating I should be at least given this much money. Unfortunately, that was not an agreement that was made and they were actually given way less money and forced to leave the park. Video of illustrations and photos of Central Park in the 1850s, followed by video of maps of New York City in 1856, 
showing the location of the Williams family property. Kel Jones speaking. So he did the protest, but of course it didn't matter, it didn't work. Then they took the property, he got paid $2,335 in April of 56, and by June of 56, he had purchased land in Newtown. So here's a man that he didn't waste any time. An 1856 map of Newtown, Queens, New York, showing the location of the Williams family property followed by historic 19th century photos of the Williams family and ending with a group photo of Ariel Williams' family. Ariel Williams speaking. Through kind of my studies and my understanding of the Williams family from all the research that I've done, we were very resourceful people. And with this new land, he was able to really start to invest in Andrew Williams number two's education. He was the first one that was able to read and write invest in other different things as well and continue to be a property owner and so after Andrew Williams number two Andrew Williams number three was a very educated person a musician as well and actually traveled the world and attended what is now Columbia's music school today and he had a son they moved to California my grandfather started a security business that my father worked with him on and they're both in law enforcement and we kind of grew up in California the rest of our lives. Historic shots of the descendants of Andrew Williams, Kel Jones speaking. What is really meaningful is to find a family in a time when it was very difficult for blacks to survive, let alone free. And to see someone who was taking care of a family, working and saving his money, and always showing a sense of family. Video of Ariel Williams in Central Park at the Seneca Village location, reading the Seneca Village exhibit displays, Ariel Williams speaking. Being in the park where Andrew Williams' house was located was really a little bit overwhelming. Overwhelming in a good way, in that so many people would be interested in learning more about my story and about my family and our involvement with Seneca Village and where we went after that and what happened after that. Video of archaeologist excavating Seneca Village. Cal Jones speaking. What Seneca Village has put into focus for me is the importance of history. Cynthia Copeland speaking. History is just absolutely the center of everything that we do. It can have a profound effect on who we are as people. Photos of the Williams family down through the generations. Ariel Williams speaking. Now I feel very connected to not only my father, but my family. I understand the pride behind my name and understand where I came from and the traits that I took from those people and why my father was the way he is and why I am the way I am today. Cal Jones speaking. History is great. You have to know your history. You should know where you came from to know where you're going. Special thanks to Caledonia Jones, Manhattan Borough Historian Emeritus, member of the Institute for the Exploration of Seneca Village History. Cynthia Copeland, historian, member of the Institute for the Exploration of Seneca Village History. Ariel Williams, descendant of Seneca Village resident Andrew Williams. Images courtesy of Ariel Williams, New York City Municipal Archives, David Rumsey Map Collection, New York Public Library, New York Historical Society, Central Park Conservancy.